She was elected MLA and Richmond Senator in 2013, 2017, and again in 2020. She currently serves as the official opposition critic for tourism, arts, and culture, and multiculturalism. Uh, joining us from Victoria, it's a great pleasure to welcome MLA Teresa Watt. Teresa, thanks for joining us. Thanks for making extra effort to, <laughs> to interview me over the Zoom, thanks to high technology that we can still talk to each other, even though I'm across the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I, I, we should say we had your, your uh, colleagues from across the aisle here a few weeks ago. You couldn't be here, but we appreciate you joining us via Zoom. Jim Gordon here, of course, at the uh, Richmond Senate offices. Okay, we kind of ask your colleagues the same questions and we'll we'll kick it off with you and and you have been around the political game for some time what made you want to run again in 2020 i wouldn't say it's a game <laughs> okay <laughs> it, it, it's it's really a mission um actually i must say that i have the honor of uh, serving the people of Richmond North Center. Beginning in 2013 is Richmond Center because of the increase in the population in Richmond. That's why we have one more riding and my riding more or less is split into two. I become a Richmond North Center. Uh, since 2013, as Jim, you mentioned earlier that uh, I won the third term and it is really a privilege and an honor. And I must be grateful to my constituents and the voters who still entrust me to represent them in Victoria. I must say, Jim, no career. And, and I, I don't really see this as a career. I see this as something that I give back in return to the community after I came to this wonderful province more than 30 years ago. And I feel that our whole family have uh, got so much out of this country that my late husband has always reminded me that whenever I can, I to really give something in return to this community. So that's why when I was approached by the former Premier Christy Clark uh, to run for uh, BC Liberal under the banner of BC Liberal for Richmond Center, I thought about one week and I said, yes, I feel that this is my husband's, um, uh, his, his dreams that one day I'm just not working uh, for the job. I should really serve British Columbia. And this is really the path that I have taken to serve British Columbia. I never, I never feel so much drive, so much purpose, and so much sense of accomplishment in my life. And that's why I have decided to run again uh, in the last lap election. You talked about uh, your riding. Uh, of course, things change. Uh, different uh, demos come and go. Talk about your riding and what is uh, most concern to uh, the citizens in that riding? Actually, I think um, the last, I, I'm almost in politics for a decade and I've seen so much changes, particularly with the pandemic. And first of all, housing affordability, I think is a issue, not only just to my riding, but all throughout British Columbia. True. And Richmond has always been seen as a, a, a city that's affordable. I've seen people uh, who cannot afford the housing, the living standard in Vancouver and migrated so-called and came across the uh, Fraser River to Richmond. But now I heard a different story altogether. I have some young people who were born and grew up and educated and started their family life here. And they, when I was talking to them, they are in their late 20s, early 30s. They said, Teresa, it's now getting so unaffordable that we have no choice but to leave our birthplace, our uh, upbringing place from Richmond to far away to maybe places like uh, the Fraser Valley in Langley or even in Mission uh, because rental has increased so much. E uh, um, of course, the housing prices have increased so much. The average housing in Vancouver is 2.3 million. And I'm sure Richmond is now far off from that. I don't have that figure in front of me, but for Vancouver, it's 2.3 million. I'm sure for us, is close to 2 million. And the rental in Richmond has also gone up to 1,452. So I feel that because the, the current government has blamed our peerless, peace liberal government that uh, we have been um, 
attracting too many investors from Asia, particularly from China. That's why the houses prices have gone up. But now, actually, we can see that there's no more immigrants from particularly from China. But in the last five years, you don't see any stability in the housing prices, not to say any drop in spite of the so-called speculation tax and all the kind of initiative this government has been talking about. It hasn't, it hasn't dampened the housing market. And I have to continue my MLA uh, role just to hold this government to accountable because they have been campaigning for providing affordability to British Columbia. And this is real contrary. Not only housing is unaffordable, you just go and see the gas prices, the grocery, and all kinds of things around you. They are so unaffordable. And that's why I, I think it's necessary for an MLA like me, who is passionate about the interests of my constituent that I have to keep um, holding this government accountable. When I'm in my writing, I talk to my constituent, I talk to people all over Lower Mainland because I'm from Lower Mainland. And now I don't can, I cannot afford the time to go, for, go around the province. And particularly in my writing. And when I come back to Victoria, like what I'm doing in the spring session, we will stand up in the house, make statement, uh, ask question at the question period, ask the minister the budget estimate debate so that the government will feel some pressure, but I have to emphasize that because after the last lab election, this government has become the big majority. And there are only 28 of us. Right now it's 27. Our leader hasn't been in place. So no matter how much, um, how much uh, um, uh, input we have been given to this government during the first reading, second reading, or even the committee stage in the discussion of any bill they presented, they can totally ignore us because they know, they know that hardly anybody pay attention to the legislature uh, uh, sitting and they have the big majority, they can pass any bill they want. Just look at the recent property bill they present. They are discussing about uh, uh, coming up with a cooling off period. But this is a ridiculous piece of uh, legislation. In that particular bill they presented to the legislature, it's just a couple of pages and there's nothing. You don't even know how long the cooling off period is. We've been talking to the real estate industry. They all told us that there's never any consultation. And there's a report that's going to be presented to the government by a, um, a, a special organization that they asked them to do it and they haven't even waited for that report to come out before they present that bill once this bill is passed the government can do anything in the cabinet the the bill has entrusted them with all kinds of authority that they can pass any kind of uh, uh, um, rulings without having to go through the legislature and this is not the spirit of democracy um one of the things that uh, your colleagues, when they were here in the uh, the offices a few weeks ago, we talked about that uh, even in this day of people's awareness of digital and online and website, there's still a concern that some people just don't know how to reach out to their MLA. Can you talk about how uh, people in your riding can reach out and find you to, to get help or get questions answered? I guess because my colleagues are new, and I understand that um, some of them, I, I, I was told that actually... Uh, uh, maybe now they have the office that they don't even have the actual office. I do have constituent form, the free MLA offices approaching me because obviously I have the advantage of being around yeah. for 10 years. So I, yeah, sure. I call more season MLA and I have a name recognition. So I got constituents, not for my writing, uh, uh, the voters, uh, Richmond resident calling our office, asking us to help. And they are saying that they, they heard nothing back and of course, we told them that you are not my constituent. Um, you are supposed to approach your MLA. And they said they did, but nobody returned their call. And we will try to help them and call. My office will call the number that my colleagues have and pass on their concern to them. But whatever we can help, I'm still helping them because I have, I have really, I, this is something I'm proud of. I have a group of constituent assistants who are so passionate. They are even more passionate than me. And they can 
particularly uh, uh, tackle any kind of issue that the constituent come to us. And uh, I guess it's really important for an MLA to really serve the constituent. That's how, uh, that's how to, oh, you can be elected again or not, because all the constituents are very smart. They know whether the MLA is really serving them. And uh, even though just now I was saying that nobody pay attention to the legislature sitting, but don't underestimate the voters don't underestimate any residents. So uh, as I was telling you, Jim, you're asking how they can uh, reach out to me. I haven't heard anybody who don't know how to reach out, reach out to me, but I can give you my phone number. Everybody can call our office. It's 604-775-0754. And they can always email to me, but some of my constituents are uh, English are not as fluent, so they might not be able to email, but I do get a lot of email. My email is Teresa, T-E-R-E-S-A, dot what, W-A-T, dot M-L-A, at ledge, L-E-G, dot B-C, dot C-A. And they are welcome to come to my constituency office. My constituency office is centrally located. I've been there since 2013. It's at 8120 Granville Avenue and it's on the third floor, 300 Street 300. So please, whoever that are uh, watching this uh, interview, please feel free to call us and, and ask to see with me, even though we are quite busy, um, you know, during the session in the spring and fall session that most of the time I'm in Victoria, I'm only back in my riding on Friday and Saturday. Sunday I have to prepare to fly back to Victoria, but I'm more than happy to schedule the time. And I'm looking forward to actually more person-to-person -person kind of interaction with my constituent. I really missed that during the last two years. I remember every time I have a barbecue, I have a Chinese New Year celebration, I have an open house. My constituent will, will crowd into the park at uh, my office or the Chinese restaurant, and then they will keep talking to me. And it, it's really the time that I can understand their concern. And from that kind of interaction, we will follow up with their concern. And sometimes they give us very good input. And that's why I really treasure all the interaction with my constituent. I think that that's the first thing that any echo official have to do. You have to reach out to your constituent. You have to listen to their concern and also listen to their advice because many of them do know so much about different kind of issue in the province. I feel that I'm, I have been so blessed They have made so many friends. And even though, of course, there are people that disagree with me, I must say that there are people who don't like me, but overall, I'm open to them. Even expect those people that don't like me. I, I, I remember I was door locking during the slap election, even though it was kind of difficult. I try not to make them feel that I'm intruding them. I'm wearing a mask and stand apart from the door. But I managed to continue my kind of conversation with whoever that opened the door for me. Some people might, might be very direct. No, Teresa, I won't vote for you. Don't talk to me. I say, it's okay. Uh, once I, if I am lucky enough to be elected, I still serve you. No matter if you vote for me or not, I won't ask my constituents whether they vote for me or whether they are BC Liberal or Green Party or NDP. Once I become the MLA, I have to serve every single one of my constituents. That's, that's my mission. That's my responsibility because I'm paid by the taxpayers. I got to be accountable to the taxpayers. Teresa Watt, we want to thank you for uh, joining us via Zoom from Victoria. Teresa is the uh, MLA from a, a Richmond Senator, where she has been uh, a Richmond Center, I should say, where she has been a representative, as she said, for almost a decade. Teresa, we'll have all your information um, on our screen. So uh, if viewers missed it when you were mentioning phone numbers and email addresses, we'll make sure we have that on the screen. Thank you, as always. Great to talk to you, and we uh, wish you a, a wonderful summer. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me so that more people can understand who I am and what kind of service we can provide. Really appreciate that. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Jim Gordon here at the Richmond Senate offices with another Richmond Senate video segment.